So how does climate fit into this? Well, the climate system is a large, not excludable public good. If we change the climate, everyone on Earth is affected by it. Uh, whether you like it or not, you can't go off and buy your own little private set of private climate. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and, you know, and, and we, in typical, you know, market sense, things work good because we have property rights assigned. So if you own property, it's in your interest to protect it. But there's no way to kind of say someone owns the climate system and they're going to charge everyone to use it. That just doesn't work very well. Uh, so that's when we turn to cost-benefit analysis and um, uh, try to balance the cost of abatement emissions and the benefit of avoided damages. And then, and then we look to the market to supply that abatement by setting up this market system. So that's just a little tutorial on the economics of, uh, of, of how economists come at this problem. A move then, so, so, we, we, so we, what we'd like to do the uh, cost-benefit sort of story but this is really a complicated problem because you know, it's a global problem, so we're not just comparing you know, uh, a few people up and down the street, we're comparing what happens, how people in Africa value the climate, uh, uh, what the cost might mean to them, to Latin America, to China, to the US. So it's inevitably a global problem. And then any solution requires coordination across all those countries. And so this has been one of the incredible sticking points you know, one of the reasons the U.S. supposedly had not done something earlier, uh, said, it, said, well, we're not going to do anything unless China does something too. So this is one of the fundamental coordination problems. If we go ahead and reduce greenhouse gases, but China and India and the rest of the world doesn't, it really won't have much of a benefit. So it needs a coordinated solution, but obviously the Chinese and Indians say, you developed your wealthy uh, you know, you need to go first. So that has been a big uh, problem in trying to move this forward. I think that uh, I, I, there was just an announcement out of China yesterday or today, uh, this morning. I know some of the people in the U.S. government were over there trying to negotiate. They made some progress trying to kind of reach some negotiation with China. But China has said it's not ready to take uh, reduce its emissions yet. So that continues to be a, a, a important issue. Uh, so some of these effects are in markets. Like, uh, if climate changes, it will change uh, agriculture, it will change crop productivity. Uh, we'll see that effect on food prices, we'll see that it will change the amount of water, you'll see the amount of uh, wa you know, water rates may go up or down, you'll see uh, other things like that uh, happening. Others are non-markets, we worry about massively changing natural ecosystems. So those, you know, don't, we aren't using those directly, but they'll affect our, you know, some you know, uh, different ways they affect value, whether it's our enjoyment in recreating or just our concern that if we irreparably change the uh, Arctic and have no sea ice, that will just be uh, 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 distur disturbing the, the planet in, um, in ways that we prefer not to. And one of the tricks with this is that you know, we really don't have a good sense of just how all these natural systems really link to the economic system anyway. So we may just be concerned because there's a nice rainforest in, uh, in Latin America and think, well, that's a nice thing to have, but not think it's fundamental. Yet the rainforest is, a, is part of the system that regulates carbon and the, uh, and the local regional climate, so rainfall. Uh, we, you know, we, you know, we disturb the thing, we may have disease vectors coming out of it. Uh, there's possibly, uh, you know, uh, important uh, genetic material that could be the base for crops or drugs. So some of the things that are in the natural system that we, that, you know, sort of the, uh, I guess the anti-environmentalists suggest it's just tree huggers <laughs> uh, uh, who like trees, why do we really care? I think fundamentally we don't know how integral some of those things are to the economy that we depend on or not. So that creates a, uh, a large, uh, you know, is, is a big uncertainty just in terms of saying, is this going to affect the market in, a, in the things we really consume, or is it just an uh, existence value that's important for us? And then um, interpersonal comparisons of welfare are, are tricky for us because it's one of the hidden weaknesses of cost-benefit analysis. We say that uh, cost-benefit analysis is based on the assumption that we're going to compensate everyone so that no one's worse off, and, and the idea of that is that 
you are going to make improve welfare in the world, and you can make everyone uh, better off, or at least no worse off. But whenever you make these policies, they're going to make some people worse off and some people better off. So the whole cost-benefit theme in economics is based on the presumption that you'll do these uh, these uh, uh, compensations, but they never really happen. So the whole sort of idea that cost that we can actually do this cost-benefit analysis then is, uh, is that's a weak uh, link in it. Um, and one of the factors of climate is that it's, it's, the greenhouse gases are very long lived in the atmosphere, so they'll be there for hundreds of years. So we're really, once we put them up there, they're there for a long time. We can't reverse them. There's inertia in the system. The system will continue to evolve even after we stop putting greenhouse gases in. So we're looking over incredibly long horizons, uh, trying to understand a world that's obviously very difficult to understand and what we'll value in the future uh, and compare those. Uh, and, it's, and there really is some fundamental irreversibilities in the system. Uh, once those materials get in the atmosphere, they're there for hundreds of thousands of years, so we can't turn around and go back easily. I mean, people talk about uh, geoengineering, or you know, we kind of actually have light reflectors up in the high atmosphere to kind of shade out some of the sunlight and cool us down. But even that won't st stop acidification of the ocean and other things. So it's just really, uh, it's, 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 it's hard. So, um, then it's really a problem of uncertainty and risk. That's really fundamental to this problem. You know, cost-benefit analysis oftentimes is looking at one number. But here we're really uncertain about what it will cost and as well as uh, what uh, the benefits are. And then one of the stories that's come into this is, uh, that's been a highlight is what we call deep uncertainty. So if we can characterize a problem uh, where we know it's distribution well, uh, when you buy li uh, life insurance, you know, uh, the life insurance company knows pretty well the, uh, uh, the average age that people die at. They know what the risks are. They can set price of policy such that they can uh, make money on it. That, that's a very quantifiable risk so that they can balance it. We're just trying to pool those risks. But you have deep uncertainty. We just don't even, you know, we can't even describe some of the mechanisms that are work in this thing. So I'll show you some work we try to kind of characterize the probability distribution, but we have to admit that there's really deep structural uncertainty that we don't understand. So it's really hard to kind of, from a science standpoint, we'd like to address this problem, you know, rationally, quantify it and come up with a rational, the, the best answer. But when you have deep uncertainty, it's very hard to um, know what that is or communicate it or know what to do about it because it really is speculative at some level. Um, there are macroeconomic con consequences. A lot of cost-benefit framework is done for just looking at, um, you know, like suppose we're going to put a parking lot uh, next to the beach, and that's going to destroy something there. It's all based on on just looking at the local sort of story. Once you're talking about the whole globe, we're we're not we can't assume that prices will remain the same constant, so they'll all change. So we have to look at uh, this very uh, big issue. Finally. There are many complex linkages to other environmental issues. So we're worried about biodiversity, uh, we're worried about uh, air pollution, uh, climate change and mitigation affect air pollution levels, uh, the aerosols that uh, cause uh, health problems or tropospheric ozone that cause asthma are also substances that affect the climate. Uh, if we change the amount of energy we use, that will change climate, it will change the ozone and aerosol levels as well. So these problems are interlinked in a dramatic fashion. So that is kind of some of the complexities uh, that is, are in this.